Hey everyone, Darlinian here. Welcome back to my dungeon. Today we continue on our journey to Stormwreck Isle. That's the latest and greatest starter set featured by Dungeons & Dragons. So you're looking at here the three remaining miniatures that I wanted to get to complete my set for Stormwreck Isle. So I was able to purchase all three of these unpainted miniatures at legendswarehouse.ca. Again, one of my top three stores that I promote. These guys were $5.79 each. So that's about the average price you would pay. The lowest I want to say I've seen is $4.99 or $4.79. And I think that's at 401games.ca. You're looking at the package, it's the front. So three inches wide by five and a half inches high. And that is one and a half inches deep. And all of them are the same. So I am gonna actually paint all three of them in this one video, but I'm gonna speed paint it. So I'm gonna talk about each color as I do it, and then you're gonna see me whip through it really quick. So let's go through the giant octopus. I believe this is called the Servant of the Myconids or something. So it's a specific creature in the actual adventure, but when I was looking up miniatures, there was nothing named that, but I did look at it and it looked like a giant octopus. So that's me improvising, hopefully it works out. But I'd be using the same stats that the game gives me, not by the giant octopus. This is just to represent it. That's the background image. Cool. You get the idea. It shows you an image of the color miniature, what it should look like. So I just dropped the base out, and that's excellent. They're doing the clear bases, which is perfect. Absolutely dig that they're doing that from now on instead of the black bases. That's what they had. So as you see the front, I'm just pulling the back of the package out. Very interesting detail. Just showing you up close on the camera. Yeah, that looks really cool. So no clue how I'm gonna paint it. But I actually, I shouldn't say that. I do have a clue. There is a picture in the actual starter set adventure book. Okay, so here we go. First thing that we wanna do, or that I recommend, is that you guys prime it yet again. I know it totally says primed, ready to go to the box, but it's not. Just trust me, do it yourself. But I'll show you how to do it so it doesn't take too long. So today I'm gonna to be using the official Dungeons & Dragons paintbrush set which is actually pretty cool because for only $12.95 you can get started, especially if you've never painted before, and get an idea as to what it actually feels like. So what you're looking at that comes with the set is the base coat, the detail, and the dry brush. We're going to use the base coat for a lot of the miniatures mainly, just to get it on there, and then the details for detail. So I purchased just the brush on primer because I kept going through it when I bought the starter set, the adventures pack, whatever it's called. So I was able to find the Army Painter one, which was only, I believe, three to five bucks at the time. And it's the Brush On Primer Gray, which is the most neutral color you can find. So in the beginning, you just wanna, without shaking it, release just a little bit on your plate or palette. If you see a little bit of liquid, that's okay, get rid of it. Once you squeeze a little bit out, give it a good shake. And then you wanna check it out, see if it actually looks good. You'll be able to tell from the consistency whether it's not. So you just wanna wet your base coat brush what I do recommend actually is that when you do wet your brush, it's okay to add it to your primer. You don't have to completely dry your brush as you do it, especially with primer, because if you do let it be a bit runny, you can spread it way more than you would keeping it thick, unlike regular paint. So yep, I'm just gonna dilute it a bit. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna actually prime the entire creature. The giant octopus. So you absolutely don't want any of this stuff to pull into the spots. That's why you want to spread things out. Otherwise, you won't get the detail when we go to apply the wash later on. That's going to make all the crevices pop. It's going to look pretty cool, actually. You'll see. Kind of looks like the Hydra symbol or something, right? That kind of... that's neat. So... I'm a total beginner when it comes to the painting thing. I've only been doing this for like a year and a half, but even then I went hardcore for a year and then uh, haven't been so much because I've been focused on the YouTube channel, getting all the equipment, playing the actual adventures and stuff with all the miniatures that I painted. But I was looking forward to this because I needed an excuse to paint more miniatures and this new starter set was it. Yeah, there's something meditative about doing these little miniature paintings. It seemed intimidating to me at first because all the detail, but really they're such small objects that it doesn't take long at all to paint them. And then when you mess up, because it's hard not to sometimes, 
you just paint over top of it. Again, just let it dry and then correct it. Okay, so I think that's primed. Just gotta let it dry for only a few minutes. That's the cool thing about this too. In the meantime, I'm just gonna clean my brush with some water. So the image that you're seeing on screen here is pretty interesting. I mean, I'm not a master craft painter or anything like that. Again, I just said I started painting a couple years ago and I only painted for maybe eight months solid though. Yeah, I'm gonna go with just like a really dark red and then once that dries out, I'm gonna throw a blue wash on top. Let's see how that looks. So as I was talking about keeping your brushes clean, you should actually keep your brushes facing down so that way the water and stuff doesn't drip into the head of the brush and then clog it up. So you should keep these little plastic tops Put your brush back in then set her down like that into a cup or anything. Just get in that habit, man. You'll totally appreciate it because you won't have to buy more brushes all the time. It does happen pretty quick. I'm using Cambian Crimson. That's the color I'm going with. Let's see what happens. Again, just without shaking the bottle, squeezing out the very top, getting rid of any of the clear liquid. And I'm going to shake it vigorously. Yep, that paints a lot thicker. Back to my base coat brush. I'll wet it before I'm going to do it again. This is supposed to be, I believe, an undead octopus that's used as a servant by the Mycanids. You'll have to watch, see the adventure unfold as I present it with the Warlock tile system. So I just want to show you how quick we can slap some paint on this guy and it'll dry very quickly. I'll probably have to use a second coat, but I don't want to get thick globs anywhere. I do want to spread this out. It's very easy forget that you need to spread this stuff out and then do a second coat later. You just will get the best result. I will be painting these a different color on the bottom here after. Oh, it's looking cool. That's looking cool. So yes, I'll be using the Sturge tent to go underneath the giant octopus. I want to be a little bit patient when it comes to the edges here, because we do know we want to have it show as a separate layer. And I will probably be adding another color for the actual cups. This will look way better after I get another coat on here and it's worth it. So now we're just gonna set them down, let them dry. Wet the brush, clean it for a second looking for other spots and I'll show you what I can see so far while on the head there. Now that I look through the phone, that's crazy. Hmm. So it's very cool to see this magnified if I have it in focus. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. So next up, I'm going to actually use the detail brush and we're going to do those little suction cups underneath the giant octopus. So I've chosen to use ethereal blue. Hopefully I can get just around the cups, not actually get all over the place, but we'll see. I won't know until I try. Here we go. I'm trying to get the detail in. So you don't want to put that much on the brush. I just soaked it. Hardly any actually. Look at this. So you do have to apply paint a lot, but you want to apply the smallest amount. That way you're not overdoing it, you're not clogging these up. You allow the detail to punch. I'm just winging this too. Just to show you how easy this can be. And you don't have to be any good at painting. All right, so for the final touch, we're gonna add a blue wash. So specifically, I believe this is going to give it that effect that you're seeing on the picture that I'm using as my inspiration. We'll see. Here's the blue wash. It comes in a set made by Army Painter. Now that I'm doing this, he is pretty dark in the picture. 
So maybe I will glob this on. Not that you're supposed to. You're supposed to get in the little crevices and take your time, let it dry. But you know what? This guy's pretty blue toned, pretty dark. Let's just get him all over it. But I don't want to leave it blotchy, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to, even though he's wet on the top, I'm still going to go underneath because he looked like he had this everywhere. This undead look. It's all that effort to get these two pinks, but let's see what happens. This will give it the more real fleshy type look versus the cartoony vibrant look. I could be using a detail brush to get in there with this wash, but I'm just showing you like how quickly you can put this together. Okay, let's let this dry and then see what it looks like. You probably can't see it, but the eyeballs, I'm gonna make them black. And that'll do it. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move on to the bronze dragon wormling. It is featured in the starter set, but none of the 2D mini set or the 3D printed heroes obviously featured any of this. So I had to get it. There's the image at the back. So I think this is going to be a little bit more challenging than what I had just done here with the giant octopus because I'm going to try and do the highlights and stuff like that so you'll be able to see me add a little bit more detail but hopefully it'll turn out. Alright so as always I highly recommend that you yourself add the base coat so I'm going to use the neutral gray primer. So I just completely painted him angelic yellow. So he looks pretty yellow, but I am going to apply a second base coat because I can see the gray coming through. So I'm going to actually be adding a third coat because I can still see the gray showing through and I want this to be a solid yellow before I continue. So after a third coat, that's what it's looking like. For his chest, I'm actually going to be mixing two colors, Lawful White and Ethereal Blue. We're going to basically make this almost pure white with the hint of this Ethereal Blue. Now I'm going to try using Minotaur Hide underneath the wing area that you're seeing in the photo. So I wanted to get that dark right underneath the wings and then I'm gonna dry brush the other. <laughs> Try that with some yellow. That's helping a lot. Oh yeah. See the difference here? Watch this. There we go, that's much better. So for his tongue, I'm just gonna use an ethereal blue. Now I'm gonna paint his toenails and his fingernails black. Alright, 
So now he's got some toenails and fingernails. Claws, I should say. Then I'm going to use the Feywild Emerald for his eyes. So we're going to use Skeleton Bone for his teeth. So I'm going to be giving him some Sturge Tan on the inside roof of his mouth. So now what I'm going to do is use the Ancient Mummy, and I'm going to put this on the highest raised areas in order to give them a highlight. Um, you can see, let's say the crown of his head, for instance. So as the example, I would want to just look again right near the edges of his crown, just a little bit of touch. Hopefully this dries okay and it's not too strong. Yep, that would give it that gradient type feel, yet I'm just using a slightly lighter color. And the scales based on the image I'm using, which is literally the image that we're referring to here, is the same pose. I mean, look at that. Pretty cool, eh? But once I get a green wash on the edges here, so for this, I'll be using the Green Tone by the Army Painter, Quick Shade. It's a wash again. So now I'm going to get in the crown of his head. Right in the corners. Right in the crevice, excuse me. Just the crevice. Putting it on his nose because I do see it on his nose. It's like a greenish tinge. But this might do the job. Well, it will do the job. I mean, he already looks like a bronze dragon wormling. And now also along the tail, just barely in between try and get just the spine sticking out if I can so this is my bronze dragon wormling you can totally spend another few hours if you wanted going over fine details but I'm happy with this. This totally serves its purpose. I feel it does justice compared to what you're seeing in the actual photo. Maybe I'd make the green tips there not so big, just a little bit thinner. But other than that, oh, I'm pretty happy. That's pretty cool. And last but not least, the main villain for Storm Isle, And that is our Blue Dragon Wormling. He was actually included in the 2D acrylic set, which is incredible. Totally dig it, and it looked awesome. You'll have to see the video if you haven't. But I did have to get the 3D. I had to. Always again, 3D printed over 2D. This will represent him. His face does not look like a gremlin the way the other one did, at least not in this render. Looks pretty dark. I wish this was brighter blue just to see, because again, very hard to see detail. But yeah, let's bust this open and get him done. So this is what we're looking at. All right, so now we're gonna start priming him. So when I am priming him, what I should be doing technically is thinning this out because by thinning it out, it won't glob up and we'll be able to preserve some of the detail. On the bronze dragon wormling, I regret putting too much yellow paint on the neck and the body because I'm pretty sure there was some scales that are supposed to show through. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see the detail on his back. They're the finest little bumps. But those are his scales. If I put too much paint on that, it won't show. It'll just be a solid body.
So now that he's primed, we're actually going to try and paint him according to this picture from dndbeyond.com. So I'm choosing, based on that photo, not necessarily the adult blue dragon because I feel it's more of a teal color. It looks darker in this image here and on the 2D acrylic. So I'm going to go with Kraken Blue because when I hold this beside that image, it seems to be the closest color that I have. This time I'm going to make sure that I don't put too much paint on his body so therefore we can see hopefully his scales this time. For the wings on the inside and outside, I'm going to be using Ancient Mummy as well as the belly. Now I'm going to do a second coat of blue, but carefully because it looks pretty good already, but there is stuff showing through. The second coat, I'm just going to do a bit of touch ups on both colors until both are satisfactory and then we'll get some washes onto it. Maybe I'll do his eyes after. Okay, so right now I'm actually gonna try and add a lighter tone by dry brushing the color frost blue onto the blue, just highlights and areas if I can possibly. Hopefully I don't muck this up. So we're going with frost blue to dry brush this on. All right, so I should be doing it near the mid parts of his arms. Just lightly, lightly. No, even though I did add those tones, I feel like it's even lighter. Let's go with a ghostly blue to accentuate even the lighter tones. For his horn, it's because it's bone. Now his teeth. Now I'm going to try flesh wash on the inside of the wings. So now that I've done this, I would actually recommend going with the soft tone on the inside of the wing as well. It's just not as dark. So you're going to just see me add a soft tone to this area. So what I'm going to do now is add some skeleton bone to his jaw where there's some bone sticking out. So now, 
the blue wash. Let's see what I can do here in the crevices. So adding it to the striations in his muscles, that's ideal. It's just you don't want to get it too globby or globbed up. Dum, dum, dum. So there you go, Dragons of Storm Rack Isle, coming soon, all three done, ready to go. My preparation is now just reading the manual and building the actual maps, and you guys are going to see that very soon. Stay tuned. <laughs>